check this out. In order to create a menu with Quasar, we just add, for example, a button and then just throw a menu directly in there. Q dash menu like this. Now anything inside of here is going to be visible in that menu. So let's have a card and then maybe a Q card section inside of that. Q dash card dash section. And then maybe just some lorem ipsum for some content in that card. Save it. And there's our button. How about we give that button a label? Label is equal to more stuff. And now when we click on this, there we go, we get a menu. It's as simple as that to make a menu using Quasar, simply using this component. It's really, really cool. And notice that basically it's set the width of this card so that it doesn't bleed over the edge. That's really awesome. The fact that it basically resizes it to the correct amount for you. And a great reason you might wanna do this is to add, for example, a login menu in the top right of your application. So how about this? Let's make it round, save that. And maybe instead of a label, we can have an icon equal to account. Almost like this is an account information menu. Oh, there's no account. How about person there? There we go. And then we can give it a color equal to primary. And then I also might make it a little bit smaller. Let's say size is equal to, or maybe we'll, make, we'll just make it dense. Yep, there we go. Now I'm going to grab all of this, cut, add a comment in there. And then we'll move into main layout.view. And now if I scroll down here, this bit of code here is basically giving us the Quasar version. So I'm gonna highlight that, paste it in there, the thing that we just cut, and there we go. Now we've got a menu that we can click on and you can imagine you could have in here like sign out, account information, change your password, all that kind of stuff could then sit inside of this menu. And instead of having a Q card, you might have, for example, a Q dash list and then of course within that list you want to have q dash item and then a q dash item dash section and then we'll say here log out and then i'll copy these down what else could we have log out change password and then account where you can change your account information so save that and there we go look at that a really nice menu all we had to do is throw a list directly in there and another thing you'd probably do in this case is click on these items. I'm gonna alt click on the beginnings of these and then say clickable, save it. And then now when we hover over these, it's more obvious that we can click on them. Cool, I might change the color as well. Let's set that to secondary and then we might make this unelevated. Yeah, that looks a lot better to me. But what about dealing with closing the menu? So for example, when I click on here and try closing one of these items by clicking on them, nothing happens. Usually when you click on a menu item, the menu then disappears and the action takes place. So let's have a look at how we do that. The first thing we could do is go to each of these individual items. So if I double click on clickable there, control D, control D again, and then press across two times and then space, we can now put something directly in all of those items. We can add here V dash close dash pop up. And this doesn't just work with menus, this works with dialogues as well. It's a way of basically saying when this is clicked on, I want you to close whatever pop-up I'm currently in. So let's give that a try and it works. How cool is that? However, it's kind of weird that we have to do that for every single item. So let's control Z and get rid of that. We've also got an option here to say auto dash close. And now when we click on any of those items, it's going to close automatically. Okay, so let's jump back into the index file. So I'm gonna cut this again. Let's grab the entire button. Control X, save it. And then we'll jump into index.view and paste that directly in there. There we go. Now we can play inside of this area here. So if I change this from a button to something like a Q dash card, and let's come in here and say, style is equal to width 400 pixels. And we'll also give it a height of 400 pixels. I'll show you where I'm going with this in a second. Save it. So now we've just got this big card area. What we can do on the menu is say touch dash position. And that basically means that the menu will open based on where your mouse is when you click on it. I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on here, the menu opens right where my mouse is. See, that's pretty cool. And this is particularly useful if you're using a context menu. So if I add in here, context menu, that means that I need to right click to open the menu. 
So you can imagine you've got like a space in here and you want to say, for example, maybe there's an add button. And then when you click on that add button, it adds a new item inside of this card. I don't know, something like that. This is where a context menu might come in handy. And by the way, if I go control shift I and change this to a mobile device, when you're using a context menu, it works on mobile as well. You just have to click hold and then the menu will pop up. So it's kind of well thought out context menus in that you can right click on a desktop and then click hold on a mobile device to get it working. One more thing I'll point out is that we can model this. So let's go back. I'm going to control Z until we're back to a button here. And then add in here V dash model and we'll say show menu. And then of course we're going to need that data. So let's scroll down. We will yank ref out of view. We'll come down here and we'll say setup. And we'll say const show menu is equal to a reference. And how about by default, we set that to true just to prove that this is working. And then I'll come down here and return an object. So that show menu is now exposed on the template. Now let's refresh the page. And that's not popping up. So let's see what I've done wrong here. Oh, that's still a card. Let's change that to a Q dash button. All right, there we go. Now if I refresh the page. Okay, so it looks like that isn't showing the menu by default. However, I should now be able to put a button in here, Q dash button, set the label here equal to show menu. And then let's make it so that when you click on this button, show menu is then equal to true. Oh, and I see what I've done wrong now. Show menu shouldn't be on the button. Ah, oh, silly me, it should be on the menu. And there we go. So if we refresh the page, it's shown by default. Let's copy paste this button down here and have another one for hiding that menu. How about hide menu? And then if we click on that, we set show menu equal to false. So if you ever need something somewhere else in the application that hides and shows the menu, you can click show menu, hide menu like that. And this is particularly useful, for example, if you've got some sort of a guide in your application that tells users what to do. You might want to automatically open that menu and say, you know, this is what you do next, and then automatically open another menu. It can just sort of help guide the user when you're creating one of those sort of tutorials for your application. That's where this might come in handy. But for the most part, you probably won't be using it. So let's come down here and get rid of that. Another thing we can have is submenus. So imagine this, let's have a dense button and change the color here equal to, we might get rid of the color there, or maybe make it gray dash two. Let's save it and see what that looks like. Uh, not very visible, so let's just change that to gray. And instead of round, we'll bring that back to a normal looking button. And get rid of dense there as well. Okay, and maybe this is like a file menu uh, inside of an application. So let's change this to a label equal to file and get rid of the icon there. That'll do for now. You can do some extra styling on that if you would like. But imagine that we've got this and we want to say file, then we've got all the options. And then what if we want a sub menu as well? We could come down here and say, for example, instead of change password, let's change that to preferences. This one could be something like new. And this one could be save as. All right, that's probably a pretty good example. And then maybe preferences opens another menu on the side here. How could we do that? It's actually really easy. We just throw another menu in there. So inside of preferences, we can say here Q dash menu, and then we can have another list. In this case, you'd probably make new components so that this is more manageable, but you get the idea. We could say Q dash list, and then have a Q dash item inside of there, and then a Q dash item dash section, and then option one, we'll just call that for now. Let's just copy paste that down a couple of times. Yeah, you would definitely need something else here. So maybe we could say, I don't know, maybe sub menu. And we put that here just so it's a little bit easier to understand with that commenting. And these items, I want them to be clickable. And that should probably do for now. Let's see if it works. Preferences. Oh, that closed automatically because we probably got auto close on. Yeah, so let's get rid of that. And then try this again. Preferences, and there we go, we get the preferences. But this layout is a bit crappy. Usually it would be showing right next to the pre preferences here. So let's have a look at how we can fix that. We can come in here and then say anchor, 
An anchor, by the way, means that the thing that you are connecting to. So in this case, it's going to be this item section. That's what the anchor is in this scenario. So I want to be on the top end of this item section. So let's come in here and say top end. And then we want to say self. So this is the actual menu itself. So this, this list in here, where do we want that to be referenced from? Top start, right? So the top left side or the top start is where this is going to show. So let's save that, click on here, click on preferences. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Let's do a refresh. Ah, I see what's going on here. It's probably because we've put our menu onto the item section as opposed to the item itself. And since the item section has some padding, the section itself probably starts around about here. So let's see if this works. Let's take this menu and then basically push it up a little bit so that it's on the item instead. Let's try that. There we go, that looks a lot better. And another thing you might wanna do is add an icon to this preferences button. So let's see how we can do that. First, we need to find it. This is getting a bit unwieldy, isn't it? So we'll come down here. There we go. There's preferences. And then we can come in here and add another Q-item-section there. And we'll say that this is a side section. By the way, I've done a video on lists, on Quasar lists. So you can check that out to understand what's going on here. I know it does get a little bit overwhelming and unwieldy. But if you watch that video, all of these item sections and lists and list items will start to make a lot more sense. Anyway, moving on. Let's add a Q dash icon in here. And I want to give it a name equal to keyboard arrow right. This is just one of the icons we have available to us by default. And there we go. It just makes it a little bit more obvious that when you click on this, it's going to give you more options. Cool. Now let's go back up here to our original menu and start playing around with some other things that we can do. So we can also say fit here. And that means, for example, if we have a really wide button, Let's set the width equal to 300 pixels. If I click on that, it means that the menu is going to take up the entire width. So notice that if I get rid of this fit option, clicking on there means that it's not going to automatically resize for that entire button. So that's good to know. We can also change the maximum height. So let's come in here and say max dash height, and we'll set that equal to 80 pixels. Save it, and now open this menu. And there we go, we've got a max height on that. This is probably a bad example of when you'd use it, but you might run into situations where you need to set the maximum height, especially for really long lists. We can also put a class on here, of course. So if we say class is equal to background dash primary, and then give it a text equal to white, that means we're gonna get a primary colored list. And you'd probably wanna change the color of the icon, but you get the idea. Let's see what else we can do. We can also say persistent. And this is basically going to insist that the user does some sort of action on this list, otherwise it won't close. So if I click on here, start clicking around the application, nothing's going to happen. But then if I click on one of these items, well, it's not closing because I forgot to put auto close on there. <laughs> so we put auto close on there. Now clicking on that item will close it, but we can click around the app all we like and it's not going to close. So this can be helpful if you really wanna force the user to pick an option here, but we'll get rid of that for now. What else can we do? Oh, we can change the transition as well. So let's say transition show and set that equal to flip dash right. And then we'll have one for height as well and set that equal to flip left. Save it. And now we get this really cool transition every time we show that menu. So that might be fun to play around with. Another thing we can do is set the offset of the menu. So if I say here offset, we can give it an array. And how about... 18 by 18. And notice that it's now going to be offset a little bit. I've never really needed this, but you might need it in some edge cases where you want the menu to show in a slightly different position than what it's set at. So we got offset. We can also change the positioning however we like. And I already kind of went over this, but anchor, when you're positioning things, refers to the thing that the menu is attaching to. So in this case, we, att we are attaching to a button so the button is our anchor. This is our anchor. Self refers to the menu itself. So whenever you see self, just sort of think the thing that I'm currently on. So the menu itself. 
anchor is the button, self is the menu itself. All right, so what we can do now is we can say the anchor is equal to top dash middle. In other words, in terms of the button, we are referencing the top middle, so this part of the button here. And then for self, we could say bottom dash middle. In other words, the bottom of this menu is going to connect to the top middle of the button. I'll show you what I mean. Let's open this up. Oh, and it looks like we've got an error here. Let's change, uh, I think it's because of this dash here. So let's get rid of that dash. Looks like that error is gone. Click on the menu, and there we go. Once again, for the anchor, the top middle is now connecting to the bottom middle of the menu itself. So you might want to play around with this a little bit because understanding this anchor self concept kind of shows up throughout Quasar. Let's have a look at bottom left. There we go. So now the top middle of the button connects to the bottom left of the menu. And it's probably worth noting that when you're dealing with vertical, the, instead of the word middle, they use the word center. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say center right here. And that basically means the center right of the menu. Oops, I was pointing at the wrong thing. The center right of the menu. And let's connect that to the center left of the anchor. So this part here, center left of the anchor, should connect to the center right of the menu. Let's see if that works. And it does. So that's how you get total flexibility over the positioning of the menu. But do also note that Quasar is usually going to help you in that if there isn't enough space for the menu to show, it will start rejigging things around a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And basically it's going to do its best to show things in which case the anchor and self is going to be sort of changed or ignored if it doesn't fit on the screen. So it's going to try and do some smart things to make sure that works correctly. So you might want to basically set these values so that no matter what the screen size, it's still going to show correctly. Uh, for example, if you've got uh, a button up here that opens up a menu, then you probably want the anchor to be something like this. Bottom, left, and then self to be top, right. And there we go. So if this button were sitting up there, you would know that the menu is going to have plenty of space to show. So that's one thing to keep on mind. You can basically leave these out and say, hey, Quasar, do your best to show the menu correctly. Or you can give it a little bit of extra help and say, I know that there's going to be space in this location in my app. Therefore, set the anchor and self to these specific values. Quasar gives you that flexibility so that you can give the user the best experience possible there. And that's about it for the menu component. So I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I really love this component. This is something that I kind of scatter all throughout my application. So definitely get to know the Q menu component, make friends with it, and I think that you'll find it useful too. All right, see you in the next video.